What's up guys, Chad Daddy here. Uh, I just killed Queen Anserek with my guild last night, and I wanted to make a solid video for her, uh, where I go over a bit more than I ever could with my live commentary. Uh, this boss is quite technical for a heroic fight, so doing some like specific Disc Priest prep is super good. Uh, so in this fight I had help from an Evoker, I had Rescue on Venom Nova 1 and 3, and Spatial Paradox on 2nd. Um, if you do not have any help at all, I will explain how you best deal with each Venom Nova ramp. Um, depending on group size, it can be either super easy or it can be um, quite difficult, actually. Alright, let's get into it. So, uh, 10 seconds on the pull timer, I would start my Rapture ramp. I would always make sure that my last shield in my single target atonements here would hit the tank that was dealing with a feast mechanic. Uh, because I want my atonement healing to help him out as much as possible. This liquefy happens roughly 10 seconds into the fight, if not slightly earlier. You'll see me hit it here. That's 10 seconds, pretty much. 10-9. Um, and then we get the feast. We're smiting a bunch here to get the Void Wraith back up, send the second Dark Reprimand into the tank to help him out. We're thinking about our Void Wraith CDR. We're thinking about our positioning for the Web Blades and for the Venom Nova. I'm moving over. At 5 seconds or so on the Venom Nova, I usually started my ramp, but that's with a 26-man raid size. If you are smaller, like 20, I recommend maybe 2 or 1 at most. Um, and this will help with you going fully wide, or rather 10 atonements, um, before you land, which is the ideal scenario. So that when you land, you are pressing Radiance, Radiance, Evangelism, Void Wraith. And those last two globals happen while you're dodging the waves. Let's go into it. I get rescued here, so I get a little bit of help, but the way that you play it stays the same. So let's watch. Okay, I'm still in my single target atonements, and then I get rescued down, I rad rad. I wasn't even immediately here, so you can see it's quite easy. We're dodging, and then when this debuff expires, we do some big healing, we top ourselves back up, we're watching the liquefy timer called pools, and we top ourselves back up again. We're not concerned with the CDR now, so we immediately go into the mini ramp for the roots coming now. And here, we cycle one rad and a mind blast. Make sure you don't overlap someone like I did. And the next thing we're hitting is a rapture ramp for the Venom Nova, Nova in 15 seconds. So we're watching the timer here. I think I start my ramp roughly at 4. Yep, that's correct. I want to talk a bit about this ramp as well. So, I get help here. I get Spatial Paradox. We are very good targets for a Spatial Paradox right here. If you do not get that, the way you'll play this, and we'll watch it together so you can see how that would happen. I will not be playing like that, but maybe you'll get an idea at least. Um, the way you would play it is that you would send your single target atonements as you're in the air, you would finish that up, and then before you land, still in the air, send Void Wraith, uh, which is an instant global, and then land, Mind Blast, Radiance, uh, Radiance, and then dodge the waves, and then Radiance again. So we'll take that again. You would ramp like I am now, and then as you're in the air, you'd finish the ramp up and send Void Wraith, so that when you land here, you would be sending Mind Blast, Radiance, and then you dodge the waves, and then Radiance again. It's a little bit suboptimal, and it would probably be quite difficult. Um, I've tried it before, and it's very doable. It's just much harder. I think we missed a damage reduction cooldown there, but yep, basically the expiration of the debuff there um, overlaps with the liquefy. We now go into the part of the fight, though, where we get do uh, like a roots into roots. So you have Silken Tomb into Silken Tomb. Um, so I ramp for the second Silken Tomb, and I want to pair this with a Mind Blast and a Radiance. You can see that here. I forget to send my barrier, which was assigned here, but that's, um, you know, that's goofy. Okay, last Venom Nova of phase one, of the, the fight, actually. I go into my evangelism ramp a little bit late, but that's okay. We want to be a little bit late than usual, because we want to hit more of the intermission. Same thing here as the first ramp, if you don't have any help. You simply land, and then you send rad rad evang um, and Void Wraith. Here, you see me struggle a bit with my ramp, that was because I got rescued incorrectly to the side. <laughs> but yeah, 
Basically, the frothy toxin that you're ramping for expires as you go into the intermission, lots of damage is going out, the Disc Priest is the main character, you're doing tons of healing, and your ramp will overlap the first pull-in called Rest. And that's a big deal. Now, depending on the DPS of your group, you can actually fit another Void Wraith in this, um, in this phase. I don't really recommend it because it's quite greedy, but it might be worth it if you're struggling for healing to try and go for. Uh, I instead opt to just send Void Blast, uh, sorry, um, Mind Blast and Void Blasts. Nothing else really, nothing special. Okay. Uh, so for this part of the fight, it's quite simple. Just don't go into melee because you're going to spawn these orbs, as you can see. Mind your feet. Um, I pair a Void Wraith with the Radiances that I sent here, because you can't send them on the first platform. That's too late. You want to save it for your Evangelism on the second platform. Um, but on the first platform, you can still send a Mind Blast, so that's super chill. Uh, make sure you target the ranged add here. Um, a lot of the damage we take here is just going to be kind of... Um, well, over time and pull in, so we're, we were kind of chilling. It doesn't matter if people are super low unless a pull in is about to happen. Um, you can also skip the second pull in here if you have good DPS and you can activate the pillars in time. A couple of ours died, so we ended up not really being able to do that. Okay, now here's the a really important part, and I'll pause. So, as you're moving up uh, this bridge, you need to be really quick. Um, and the reason for this is because once you like, engage this platform, you need to essentially immediately finish your evangelism ramp. Uh, and the reason for this is because the debuffs will go out immediately, and ideally, unless you have an overlap coming right away, which you can't, I don't think you can have that on the left side where I am. These timers change a little bit if you go to the right side. Um, this is something that's kind of general for the healers, and the, like, kind of dependent on your guild. Um, but make sure you're aware of the overlaps. The debuff hurts a lot. Uh, I assign myself to press evangelism into it because we do quite a lot of work here, and I'll explain why, and you'll see it too. So we move up here, utilize fade here if you need to, uh, just make sure you're up there quickly. You can run ahead of the tank almost if uh, people have already started pulling them in. So, okay, now we're here, we've sent evansh, I'm going to be dispelling myself here, dispel. Now, the reason why this is kind of okay is because we have shadow or death here on this ad, it's at 1% with a shield. Disc Priest versus a shielded enemy is very crazy. Devour Matter makes us so powerful. Shadow or Death becomes a crazy button. So you'll see me top us up here almost instantly. Insane healing here. Both Shadow or Deaths just cranks us up. We send a Halo. I send a Pain Suppression on the other person with a debuff. We get the pull in and then we uh, explode again. We asked for people to press personals here so that we didn't need to like kind of min-max the overlaps and it worked quite well for us. Uh, on the last platform here, you don't really need to do a whole lot. Um, this ad kind of does nothing. All you need to remember is that you can DPS a bunch here, just stay far away from the ad, place your orbs far away essentially. Uh, you don't want to put them into melee. Um, there's kind of nothing going on. A little bit of pulsing damage. As the ad starts dying, you can start moving into position. You want to get knocked through the wall. Um, and as that finishes and we fly up, uh, we're going to see that the boss is up here. She's casting Aphotic Communion. Um, now, if you play this part of the fight properly, you can send a Mind Blast and a Radiance into this. Uh, it does damage when the cast finishes. Alright, so in Phase 3, I made a couple of mistakes that you can improve upon. Um, I start ramping with Evangelism for the pools, as they're called in bigwigs, or... Gorge, as the mechanic is actually called. Um, this is a mistake. Your first ramp in phase 3 with Evangelism is for the first Shackles on Bigwigs, or as it's actually called, Royal Condemnation. Um, so you'll see me make that mistake here. Going into our uh, Evanch ramp here for Gorge, we'll see that Evanch isn't quite ready. It, it's a little bit janky, but uh, it's not zero value. It still does quite a bit here, so it's not bad. I just drop an atonement, I think. Okay, and we press evangelism after dropping an atonement. We crank some healing here and dodge these swirlies. Ideally, you would hit the royal condemnation or shackles that are coming in a bit here. Um, after this, I make another little mistake where I start doing a mini ramp for the portals timer. This is wrong. 
There is damage attributed to the portals mechanic, but it's from the ring timer that you can see that follows the portals timer. Do not make this mistake. Uh, you can cycle a Mind Blast or a Radiance here, uh, and a Radiance here even, if you play this properly. And you'll see me send a little bit more into it because I cycled everything much earlier than you normally would if you were to send your Evangelism into the Royal Condemnation. Go through the portal here. And here you have another option. So, you can send your next ramp into the gorge or the shackles, but they almost overlap. In my opinion it's better to send it into the pools here, um, aka the gorge, simply because it keeps the group healthy going into the shackles, which deals di uh, instant damage and also gives you a, um, a dot as they're pulling you in. So, that's what I end up doing. And you'll see me do that here. I'm a little bit late though, so you'll probably see me panic a little bit, but um, ramp should be sound. I send the Void Wraith, Mind Blast, Rad Rad, and we send the big healing. Good shit. Alright, so, after that's completed, the next ramp is for the big adds here. Evangelism is coming back. Even if you're playing with uh, the Royal Condemnation ramp, your Evangelism should come up in time for you to be able to ramp into parts of the cast from those ads. Um, and if that is not the case, you would simply send it on the uh, next ring mechanic, or you'd hold it for the pools. But uh, I do believe that it's quite easy to hit this um, ramp, and if your DPS is good, you might even kind of kill it around this, um, this timer. So the ad spawn here, I got my pet ready, and I'm ramping. Even if you sent the Royal Condemnation ramp, this is roughly where you would start ramping, which would be, I think, perfect. Some of the cast from these ads can be interrupted, uh, but I do not believe all of them can. Regardless, this was a pain point for one of my guilds, so I ended up sending my ramp here, and it got quite a lot of value. I think we had a couple of casts go off. I kept us healthy throughout. And after that, we go into the next ring mechanic and portal mechanic. Um, you can you can send the mini ramp here. Um, but, if you're ramping for the uh, pools that come after this and your boss isn't dead yet, it's very tight and you need to cycle your Radiance and your Mind Blast early so that they're back up for whatever you want to send into those pools. Uh, these pools do not overlap with Royal Condemnation uh, aka Shackles at all, so very important. But as you can see, the boss dies here, so we do not need to care about those pools at all. Alright! Um, I didn't have that many pulls on this boss in phase 3, because I th sort of just got into phase 3 and the boss died in 2 or 3 pulls. Um, the boss is quite easy in phase 3 and any bandwidth I could spend on this boss was usually spent minimaxing phase 1 or phase 2. Uh, which is probably the correct way to play, I think. <laughs> Um, but yeah, regardless, I hope this video helps. Even if you don't have an evoker taking care of you, it should give you some idea of what your plan should be. Uh, okay. Take care and good luck on Queen Anserek.